hi you guys hi you guys welcome back to my channel it is dana ray here um i'm back today with another word for you guys thank you guys for coming back and joining me again with another word from the lord um today is oh it's 2 12. <laughs> that's interesting because my earlier video but anyway that's not important today is october 3rd today is actually my dad's birthday that's interesting because this um dream that i'm going to share with you guys um yeah you guys will get it when i share it um but yeah today is october 3rd 2 12 in the evening or in the afternoon and i'm going to share with you guys a dream that the lord gave me and the word that he has been constantly putting before me for the past two days and what i have um gotten from him as far as downloads is concerned and as far as how he wants us to move in this season um as his daughters um so i think i'm just going to start with the dream and then i'm going to go from there so it's quite the long dream um but hey here we are uh so i had this dream on september 24th i think it was um, really really early in the morning um so my spouse was in the pink room. So the house that I grew up in, we had a room that we called the pink room because the walls were painted very light pink. So my spouse was in the pink room at the house that I grew up in and I was in my room. So the pink room was at one end of the hallway, the same hallway. My sister or what used to be my grandma's room was in the middle and then my room was on the other end of the hallway. So it was down on the same hallway. So my spouse was in the pink room and I was in my room. I knew that he was there, but I didn't say anything to him to let him know that I was there. I waited to see if he would come to my room on his own, and he did. When I saw him at the door, I was surprised, but he wasn't. He said something like, I'm seeing you again in person, and he hugged me. And I was like, I've never seen you in person. So then we were hanging out on my twin bed, talking and laughing. And then we went to the pink room because he wanted slash needed to borrow one of my dad's robes. Then we kept talking and playing. I told him something about when my husband showed up, I was getting married quick. And I never said anything about knowing that he was my husband. Now the scene changes. And we're at my old church, my the church that I grew up in. It's called St. Luke and everybody was liking my, my spouse. At some point we were in the kitchen, there was a kitchen area at my old church where we would like dine in, and then we ended up in the actual church. The choir is up and they're about to sing, and my spouse has a mic because his solo is coming up. I was the first one that got up clapping in my yellow hoodie, the same hoodie that I have on now, because I was rooting him on. He was my boyfriend now and everybody knew it. Then, they came out of the choir stand to this little boy that I went to church with. His name is Mark. And they put the mic to him and he was playing with some toy. The song that the choir and my spouse was singing was called, was this song. Oh, my brother, be encouraged. He will strengthen thine heart. Storm clouds will pass away. Dun, dun, dun. The sun is gonna shine after a while. Do you believe me? Sun is gonna shine after a while. That song is what they were singing. I think it's by Hezekiah Walker. I also remember being in my row at St. Luke. This is the church. And my sister was trying to get my attention to distract me. She was talking about some sciencey stuff, death and Halloween mess that she had seen in a magazine while my husband was singing his solo. I remember being so then that was the end of that scene. And then I remember being on the schedule at my old job. Um, my old job was at a hospital in um, Charlotte. University schedule again. And I was working with my coworkers, Lisa and Brandy, or I was talking to them. I definitely had like less than a month left at the job. And my boss, her name is T Tanya. She had changed my schedule. And we were looking on Lisa's phone so I'd know what my hours were. And then I had a vision shortly after that. Um, of bacon that was frying. Two pieces were ready and they were about to burn while the rest of the bacon in the pan was barely done. I was gonna move the um, two pieces that were almost done to the other side of the pan, but really it was ready for them to be taken out. Um, 
So that was the dream that I had on uh, on September 24th. And I thought this dream was just for me because it was very, very specific, very specific about me growing up, very specific about something had ju that had just happened that let me know, okay, this is how I'm supposed to respond to this situation. So I was like, Lord, wow, thank you for the dream. Child, I be wanting to keep stuff to myself sometimes. But it kept, the dream kept coming up. And then I was downloaded. Um, well, the Lord revealed to me the part about the robe was about... Um, like him needing to borrow my dad's robe. And I, and I was reminded um, of the prodigal son story. And I was like, wow, like, okay, you're telling me that my husband is really has come back to you um, by this robe situation, him needing to borrow my dad's robe. My dad, um, my dad's robe represents God, God's robe in this dream. So I was like, wow. So still, I was just like, okay, that's my dream. I get it. Even in the part about the um, my the boy, the little boy Mark that I went to um, church with, he actually friend requested me on Facebook like three days ago, randomly, and I was like, wow, okay, that's weird. You just gave me a dream about him, and now he's requesting me on. So this is God putting this into context. Like, yo, a lot of these dreams that he's given right now are for right now, like right now like god is not playing about what he is saying and what he is doing um so then so that was just more confirmation of the dream more you know god was just saying you know yeah this is for you blah 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 so then this this other guy that i went to church with grew up with he had said he had made a response on a video that i had posted and his name is e king his name is actually e king um so I was like, wow, that's interesting. But like I said, I've always known that I'm attached to um, a lot of the men that, you know, I had to see them differently. And I always know that there's something that I need to do that will influence them, that will encourage them to, you know, be the men of God that God has called them to be. So I wasn't necessarily surprised, but I was just like, wow, hadn't heard from him in a long time. And it's funny that he is actually one of the guys that I grew up with in church with. And you guys know some of the past um, videos that I posted. I think the, fast, the last one that I posted about um, I'm coming home was about a lot of the boys that I grew up with in church were coming back to God in that dream. Um, so then I saw Candy Crush sent me an email like yesterday and the, it was so big. It said something about King and you know how Candy Crush is like something about King and Candy Crush goes together. So anyway, they sent, first of all, Candy Crush don't even send me no emails. So I noticed King and I'm like, hmm, okay, it's Candy Crush. Then I got an email today at 111 from this person named King Shepherd. King Shepherd, some entertainment person that does parties, I think, in Charlotte or something. But King Shepherd at 111, and it was capital. And I was like, okay, God, I know you're saying something about King now. Like you're saying something about King. So that's when I um, looked up King and that's when God led me to, um, the qualities of a King. So the title of this word is the Kings are here. Let it not be known. Um, so I'm going to first read, no, actually I'm going to read the scripture, the parable of the lost son, which is what we consider the scripture about the prodigal son. The scripture is found in Luke um, Luke 15, Luke 15 and 11 through 32. And I'm going to read the entire section and um, you guys just bear with me. So it starts here, the parable of the lost son. And he said, a certain man had two sons. This is Jesus talking. And the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, and when he came to himself, um, a lot of lost spot, how, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough, and hold on, hold on. 
And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe. Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and he would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he, answering, said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment, and yet Thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends, but as soon as thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, and has killed for him the fat thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was it was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. The kings are back. God has accepted them back into the kingdom of God. He has given them their robe and they are ready to walk into the purpose for which God created them for. They are ready to take their position in the kingdom of God. These kings are the men of God. Some of them are our husbands. Some of them are our sons. Some of them are our fathers. Some of them are our nephews. Some of them are our co-workers. They could be anybody. The men of God are back. In the dream, my my spouse, he wanted, and, and it's funny because in this room, this pink room in this home that I grew up in is where my dad keeps his old suit. Well, not his old suits, but the suits that he's not wearing at the time is where he keeps like old robes that he has not like brought out yet. They're new robes, but he just like, he wears the old one until, you know, it's time for him to get rid of that one. And then he'll come back there to that closet and bring out something new. Like when my dad goes back into that closet to get something, he finna come out sharp. My spouse went to that closet to borrow a robe that was my dad's. you're not picking up what God is putting down right now, then I don't know what else to say. God is not playing about these men who have come back, who he has accepted, and they are ready. They are ready to roll. They have put on the robe that God has prepared for them, laid out for them, and it is time. So now I want to read the qualities of a king, the qualities of a king. They are centered. Kings are centered. He is centered. That means that he is able to keep 
calm during chaos. He is decisive, sure, knows how to make decisions. He lives with integrity, honest, okay? He protects his realm. He protects his household. He protects those who are called to him. He protects women, children that he is around, that he is in leadership of. He provides order. The order is being restored in our nation, in our country, in our world, because the kings are back. He creates and inspires creativity in others. He blesses the lives of others. He leaves a legacy. Those are eight qualities that the Lord led me to, eight qualities of a king, eight qualities of the men that God has has brought back that he has that have come back to God and are now ready to take their rightful place in God's kingdom. Another little section. The king would have this is this is describing how the kings in the Bible were. The king would have the responsibility of making sure God's will was done among the people. He was to deliver the people from their enemies and lead them in right Past. The men of God have a responsibility to and for those people that God has placed under them. Okay? And God has put everything in them that they need to carry out these roles. We are called the help meets because we are the support. Okay? Also, I looked up robe. A robe symbolizes authority. A role is a symbol of authority. The men of God have an authority. They are to be respected as the authority in our lives, in our households, because they are kings, okay? And we are to treat them as such. We are not to treat them like their past. We are not to treat them like the sins that they have come out of. We are not to treat them... We're not even to treat them how some of them may feel about themselves when they first come to us. I pray that Lord help me to see my husband how you see him, not how he sees him because a lot of these men don't see themselves correctly. I already told you guys, they don't see themselves as worthy. They don't see themselves as kings. They don't see themselves as leaders. They don't see themselves as capable. We are to see them as the kings that God has said they are until they get to a point where they're healed enough and, and they can see themselves correctly. They are already kings when they come to us. Okay? And this is not just for marriage. This is when they come back to your home, mama, or when they come back, you know, to your life, daughter, as a dad, whatever. You don't treat them like their past. They are kings and they are sons of God, okay? Then the other part um, from this word is coming from scripture that the Lord has continuously, continuously, continuously led me to. And the part um, of this title, let it not be known, that part comes from Ruth 3 and 14. And it says, as she lay at his feet, until the morning, and she arose before one could know another. And he said, let it not be known that a woman came into the floor. In this dream, I told you guys that I was in my room and my, I knew my husband was in the room a couple doors down. And I was wondering, I had made a decision that I was not going to say, I was not going to let him know that I was there. I wasn't going to do anything. I was just going to see if he was going to come on his own. And he did. Okay. You do not have to do anything to let the king, the man that God has for you know that you're there. You don't have to do anything to let him know that you're available. You do not have to do anything for him to see you. God has already done it. You need to sit still and be in purpose. God is not the author of thirstiness, okay? He is not the author of desperation. 
you, some of you guys need to get, some of you women need to get busy and focus on yourself and stop trying to make yourself known because a kingdom man of God, I have already got, told you guys this, are not looking for a desperate woman. What you are doing to try to get him to notice you could actually be pushing you away from him. So stop it. Men want to pursue, okay? And they don't need for you to be looking desperate. You looking like all these other girls, these kingdom men that are coming to us that God has preserved and prepared for us, baby, they have options. Yes, we know that they're gonna choose the option that God has for them, which is us, but the options are thirsty. The options are being extra. We don't need to do that. We are women of God. We are called to stand beside these men and support them. God has given us the confidence. He has whipped us into shape. He has let us know who we are and that we are worthy and capable of these beautiful, yes, kings of God, yes. But we don't have to be desperate. Ain't nobody out here like, oh my God, I can't wait till he comes. Like, yeah, like, okay. We can't wait till he comes. I can because I'm enjoying my, my life right now. I am enjoying my single life. And if you're not in a place where you are enjoying your single life and you almost have, are grieving that this single life is coming to an end, then you might not, your cousin might not be around the corner because God ain't sending his sons to no desperate women, okay? So you, you better get it together. Okay. Also, another por portion of let it not be known, and I've told you guys before, and I know the Lord has told you guys before, to when this man approaches you, when this man finally calls you, when this man finally reaches out to you, when this relationship comes together, or you just finally hear something from him, you need to be quiet. You are not to let a single person know about your union until God says it's okay. For your safety, for the safety of your spouse, and for the safety of your union, the enemy is ready to use these people that you want to tell to keep you from walking into these marriages. Obedience is what is going to get you into your promise right now. Obedience. If God told you not to say anything, you better not say anything. If God told you to go get married at the courthouse, you better go to that courthouse and get married and be quiet. I know he's already told you and you're getting here and it's getting close and you're getting excited. Don't forget what God said and then try to blame him when you let somebody come in here and ruin your marriage and have you doubting, be quiet. Let it not be known. Okay? The last thing that I want to say, I think that's all I want to say about the dream. Is that all I want to say about the dream? Oh, oh, that, oh, that, so on top of that, Speaking of, in the end of the dream, my sister was trying to get my attention while my spouse was singing his solo. Some people that are around you are going to try to distract you from what is in front of you. Your focus needs to be on your spouse. You done waited all this time for this and now you, you don't have time? No. Your focus needs to be on your spouse, on this union. You need to be fasting and praying and standing against what the enemy is about to come and throw your way. You need to be ready and on guard. You need to have wisdom. 
and you need to obey what God has already told you to do. I don't care how scary it is. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You need to obey what God has already told you to do. In the end of this dream, when it was talking about my schedule had been changed at my old job and I knew, I knew that I was only going to be there. What did it say? Less than a month. I knew I had less than a month left at this job. Baby, some of y'all, y'all think y'all got time? Some of you guys are going to be married within the next month. Like, God is not playing. It does not matter if you're not talking to him yet. God is not playing. When God says he's going to, he's going to do something quickly, when he says he's going to do something fast, when he says he's going to do something swiftly, that means that this is these marriages are something that we have never seen before. We have seen people get married in six weeks, but you ain't seen nobody get married in two days. Be ready for God to do something he has never done before. It is not too good to be true. It is not. It might seem a little crazy, but what's impossible with man is possible with God. Yo, some of you guys have less than a month left. Look at that. <laughs> some of y'all got less than a month left. That was confirmation. God is like, all right now, I ain't playing. Like, Yo, get it together. Last part that I want to talk about in this word is this song. Y'all, this song was posted by um one of my followers. And I hadn't even, I heard the song before, but I ain't heard it in a long time. Anyway, and I posted it one time in my community page, but it keeps coming back around. Yesterday, I woke up from a nap and I just thought about, my heart thought about all the men of God that are coming back to him right now. And it just... I was boo who crying, y'all. I couldn't, I wanted to post this word yesterday, but I couldn't because I couldn't even get myself together. Uh, but it just, my heart just leaps for the men coming back to God because I know that we can't, we can't do nothing if our men ain't in place. I don't care how feminist you want to be, how much you want to go out there and throw your fist up, talking about women power and all of that. Yeah, like we have a, we are powerful people, but we ain't can't do nothing without our men in place and in position, okay? Because that's God's order. So you either getting with it or you ain't. Anyway, let's get back to the song. The song is called Coming Back Home. It was released in the year 2000, and it's the song by Bryant McKnight, um, B.B. Winans, and Joe. And I'm going to post the link to the video in the, um, com I mean, not in the comment section, but in the, whatever, in the little box under this video. Because the video, y'all, the song say a lot, but the video, it you, you finna cry. If you ain't seen it yet, you finna cry. And every time, like, it's just, it's just so powerful. Anyway. Here are the lyrics. I'm going to read the lyrics out and you just take it from it what you what God is wants you to um, get from it. The lyrics are, took some time to come around. Realize how I let you down. Been too late for sorry now. My pride got in the way. Yes, it did. I thought I had it all figured out. I needed time away to work it out. And now that I've learned what it's all about and all I need is you in my life. Here's the chorus. So I'm coming back home, home where love is waiting for me. Been gone much too long. This is where I want to be. So I'm coming home, coming home cause home is where I belong. Next verse, somehow I lost my way. Mistakes I made, I have to pay. It hurts to know still today that I wasted so much time. And after all is said and done, there's more to life than having fun. Ain't no doubt you're the one and all I need is you in my life so I'm coming back home, home where love is waiting for me. Been gone much too long. This is where I want to be. So I'm coming home, coming home, cause home is where I belong. 
the last little verse says, just to be in your arms is like heaven to me. Your love, your love is all that I need. And then it goes back to, so I'm coming back home. Y'all, I ain't even, I don't even know what else to say about that. Like, listen to the song, watch the video. Like I said, I'm going to link it down below. God has given these men their robes. They are here. The kings are here. Receive them well. Be quiet until the Lord tells you to speak. Oh, you guys, sorry. I need to put this in before I finish the word. I was just re-watching it, and I remember I didn't say anything about the vision of the bacon that I had. So I told you guys that like right after that dream, I had had a vision of two bacon slices in a pan with some other bacon slices, and the two bacon slices were done and the other bacon in the pan wasn't even near being done. That is signifying y'all ready, okay? You and your husband are ready, all right? It ain't no need to move the bacon to the other side. There's nothing else for you guys to do except for the appointed time to come when God will put you guys together. But the bacon is ready, child. You can take it out the pan, lay it on the paper towel for the grease, the, you know, get soaked up out of it y'all ready. So congratulations on being ready. Um, the appointed time is here. God is doing this thing quickly. Yeah. I pray that you guys will have an amazing day. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for liking and thank you guys for commenting. Y'all, the comment section be like a whole little girl group. And I love it when the men comment, like it's amazing. So it's very encouraging. So keep commenting, keep you know, encouraging one another and just stay in the game, like stay uplifted. This is a time of celebration. This is a time of joy. This is not a time to be tired. This is not a time to be like whatever all that stuff is that y'all want to be. Some of y'all want to be posting up under these things that I be having to delete. Talking about you tired of waiting and stuff, baby. We don't have time for that right now. All we got time is for excitement and joy and being prepared and ready to receive these men when they come back home. Open arms. The past is done and gone. It don't need to be brought up no more. You're going to be hot, happy. You're going to be excited, but keep your mouth shut until God tells you to say so. I love y'all and I'll see y'all the next time the Lord sends me back. Bye.